What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. We're back doing more preview videos. We've already got two up on the channel for week three of the Autumn Nations. We've already done France versus the Springboks and then Wales versus the Pumas of Argentina. Two good games going on this weekend. This is where we check out the teams. We go through the official teams that have been announced to play in these games, go through the picks. We think some good picks, some bad picks and some choices we may have made along the way along with some score predictions. So going into this one, let's start off with England first. England last week, of course, played Argentina. We've already spoke about them a bit during the Wales preview, but England didn't really do very well. To me, I was a little bit underwhelmed by that England side. I expected England to come out of the blocks in that game and really try and make a huge impact. A lot of penalties, a lot of very silly penalties that just didn't need to happen, offering points to Buffelli absolutely on a silver platter. The England attack plan, you know, they talked about Marcus Smith and Owen Farrell together, the two fly halves, 10-12 combos, two a laggy the first time they've had, the 10-12-13 combo. And the attack just looked relatively flat. Um, they would little phases of the game where it looked like it was going well. We saw the ball go wide to Thock and a Singer, making some room down the wing. Okay, there was a couple of crash balls. But in terms of live open play, it did feel like this sort of feeling of, of every third or fourth phase. It just sort of got a bit misshapen. People didn't really know what the plan was. Argentina defence was pretty hard pressing, really putting the pressure back on them. And England, to me, just weren't that impressive last week. Conversely to what the commentators were saying live, they thought they were playing extremely well. Uh, I, I didn't really think that way. So going into this game for me, I think England need to be making a few changes to the tactics. Now, this game, a big one. England versus Japan. Of course, a game we're going to be seeing at the World Cup. There's a big game going on here. And the team reflects, uh, I think, some, some interesting strategies here. This is going to be a game for the World Cup. This could arguably be the game to decide who gets out of that pool in the World Cup. If you take the Argentina win over England, if that translated to 10 months from now, Argentina get that top spot. This is the game that will arguably decide who also gets out of that group stage. So the way to do this game for me is you put on enough experienced players that you know you can probably win this game. You'd want to put down a bit of a gauntlet on Japan, put a marker on that game and say, yeah, we're going to try and win this game by 15, 20, 25 points. And it's up to you to fix your plan by the World Cup. But Japan are also playing pretty well. So let's have a look at the England team that's been announced. We start off with Genge, Kawadiki and Kyle Sinclair. Now Genge trying to get his face just into people's chests by smashing them as hard as he could last week. Kawadiki uh, actually had a bit of an impact. There's still a bit of a contest in the minute between like who people want over Kawadiki and Jamie George starting. Um, but I think Kawadiki was doing relatively okay last week. In the lock department, David Ribbans comes in alongside Johnny Hill. So testing out in different lock sections again. I really feel like the, the primary is Johnny Hill and Mauro Toje for me in that lock department. But again, this is the sort of game you want to be testing it. You want to have more international time on the pitch for some of the lesser cap players. Um, and maybe this is something you'll be seeing. Maybe you will be seeing a Toje play six. There's not really a great deal of number six as we think about now with the England team. I mean, I don't really know what's going on at the minute with Sam Underhill. A couple of other people, I think, going at number six as well. Jack Willis, does he play at number six as well? I, I haven't really got like a list of names that can play in number six. So maybe looking towards the World Cup, Toje will become that standard number six. Tom Curry in that number seven shirt and Sam Simmons at eight. Uh, Tom Curry quiet again last week. I haven't really seen a lot from him. At one point, he was just this massive jackal threat all over the field. Uh, but he does feel like he's been a bit quiet recently. Sam Simmons coming in. Um, Billy Vinopolo moved to the bench. Big call here. I would have thought size would be one of the real big advantages. Billy Vinopolo is a hard runner. Maybe they're really aiming for a late game sort of domination in this one. Sam Simmons still a hard runner, still a fast guy. We did see him have some mega collisions with some of the Argentinian players last week. So we'll have to see how that switch gets on. In a halfback partnership, Jack Van Portfley comes in ahead of Ben Youngs. A lot of people really upset by this. I have no idea why. I thought Portfolio was really good. I was glad to see him on the pitch. Thought he gave an injection of pace. Thought he was trying to get that England team to go. I thought Ben Youngs was a little bit slow, picking the ball up and, you know, sort of meandering, a little bit of a slow pass. I get it out. Get this England attack going. Try and get them on the front foot. Apply the pressure. That was one thing I feel like England was so good at. Um, not that long ago, just consistent, aggressive pressure, really putting it on you. Um, and I feel like the game against Argentina, we didn't really get to see that. So I, I actually prefer this choice for me. Uh, Marcus Smith joining alongside him, who, again, seemed to be the attacking threat. Give it to Marcus Smith. Hope he does something with it. In the centre partnership, Owen Farrell pairs up with Guy Porter this week. Uh, so obviously mixing up again. Still trying to figure out what they want to do with the centre partnership. Owen Farrell's kicking pretty good last week, to be fair. 
um, towards the post. There has been an issue in the past as percentage kicking goes and who there's going to take the kicks. Owen Farrell did well last week, so fair enough. I think he'd probably retain the kicking duties this week. In terms of the back three, then Johnny May comes back into the side alongside of Jack Knoll and Freddie Stewart. Freddie Stewart still acting pretty good under the high ball. Some counter-attack runs. Didn't manage to stop uh, Carreras from scoring his try, but that's a hard, uh, hard man to chase down from, uh, from quite a long distance, but he did get pretty close. Johnny May coming back in the team. Big call here. A lot of people, including myself, I feel like Johnny May sort of dropped off a little bit. Maybe a game against Japan is the right sort of game to maybe boost confidence. Maybe this is where you'll be seeing him score tries. Um, I did actually think Thokkana Singh had a pretty good game. I'm not sure about injury status. He's not on the uh, the bench either, actually. I just sort of assumed he'd be starting again this week. Um, so overall, a few switches coming in here. What we can expect, I think it's better putting some of the new boys on, some of the lesser cap guys on. But I still think there's a couple of things I maybe would have done with that starting 15. In the replacements then, we have Jamie George, Maka Vunapola, and Joe Hayes. Now... The replacement bench for England last week, I didn't really think made an enormous impact. We did begin to see that scrum beginning to deteriorate. The scrums weren't great overall, really. There was quite hard to actually get a complete scrum all the way through. So it's hard to gauge both them and Argentina where they're at. Uh, but it definitely felt like there was a couple of issues when that England bench came on in the scrums, you know, just sort of bringing it down in the scrum or just collapsing on their side. So it'll be something they'll definitely want to have a look at going into this game. Japan, maybe not necessarily the team you think of when you think of like hardcore scrummagers, um, but they're up for a physical game. We saw what they did against New Zealand a fortnight ago now. Um, they're up for it. They're up for it. So, you know, you can't take them lightly at all. In the 19 shirt, Alex Coles comes in and Billy Vunapola backing him up on the bench. So the 5-3 splits. I think Japan is a more open game than, than a lot of other teams will be seeing over these autumn internationals. I think this is maybe the better move than doing 6-2. Unless you were just going for all we care about is the win. Then I might say move towards the 6-2 and just use the power boys. We've seen Eddie Jones do that before against, you know, that sort of tier two level. Just bring on the forwards. And the wingers just don't touch the ball and just let your forwards just power over. And then the replacement backs, Ben Youngs, Henry Slade and Manu Tuolagi. So again, we saw all these players playing last week. Um, but mixing it up on the bench, there's some good coverage here. You've got two replacement centres. I would maybe like to see if they can avoid injuries and yellow cards and everything else. It might be fun to do 50 to 60 minutes of the starting 15. And then when you get to that 50, 60 minute marker, bring Henry Slade and Manu Tuolagi on at 12 and 13. Take Farrell, take Porter off. Make some big switches. Or maybe take Marcus Smith off, move Owen Farrell to 10, and then bring Henry Slade into a lugger. Add two new centres. Try your centre partnerships out. See what's going to work for you. See the different styles. Maybe there's a lot to learn going on there. On to Japan then. Uh, we didn't get to say this really last week. I didn't get any sort of coverage around the Japan games going on. So the last time we talked about Japan was coming up to the New Zealand game. A game where, you know, with no disrespect to Japan, I expected New Zealand to come into that game. Big team. Let's go for a bit of a walkover score. Um, and it didn't go that way at all. Unfortunately, I couldn't watch the game live over here in the UK. Um, I had to catch up on the highlights stuff. And Japan playing really well don't get me wrong there were mistakes coming from New Zealand charge down kicks or miss passes stuff that allowed Japan to get some of those scores but they worked hard and they didn't stop for 80 minutes and at some point it actually looked like Japan could go on to win that game and what an impressive performance that would have been for them so they're definitely a threat coming into this game I can't imagine we're going to be talking about too many switches from that game but there are a couple so starting on in this front row we have Inagaki, Sakate and Gu now these boys are going to be wanting to bring the power game England love their forwards I can already imagine Japan see this game they've worked under Eddie Jones in Japan they understand coming up against some Northern Hemisphere teams and some Southern Hemisphere teams as well. Big forwards is maybe an area Japan struggled to deal with. They've worked on it a lot in recent years. So getting involved with a good scrum, maybe putting the England scrum under pressure. What a confidence boost that would be for them. In the lock department, we have Derns and Cornelson, along with Michael Leach, Jimeno and Tatafu coming in in the back row. Now, Michael Leach and Jimeno both of which playing extremely well again against that New Zealand team. Jimeno seemed to be everywhere again. I've only really seen the highlights and stuff, but in every highlight, Jimeno is somewhere in there with his hands on the ball. So really excited to see what this team can bring. In the halfback partnership, Nagari alongside Yamasawa. Now, Yamasawa is not a name I'm too familiar with. I don't, I'm not that great at keeping up with my Japan rugby, unfortunately, guys. So do drop down any comments about any of these players we should really keep an eye out for. In the centre partnership, Nakamura and Riley, another one. Again, in terms of watching that game, Riley just seemed to be getting on the ball. He seemed to be a bit of a nuisance getting all over the pitch. That's what you want to be seeing. 
from your centers. And then in your back three, Van der Heever, Matsushima, and Yamanaka. So some experience there in the back three. Matsushima up against Johnny May. That'll be a fun little foot race. I look forward to see what goes on there. Um, in terms of defensive capabilities, I actually might back Matsushima there for in terms of which one I feel can defend better but Johnny May has got those cheeky little kicks over the top that he likes to do and chase it down they're both speedy players that will be quite a competitive wing in terms of the bench then we have Horikoshi Craig Miller and Kizu there's one name there that stands out as particularly less Japanese than the other uh, but we look forward to seeing those boys come on other replacement forwards we have Van der Valt, not the uh, the Scottish fly half but the uh, Japanese forward along with Peter Labushagni hopefully getting that name sort of correct a bit of a veteran in terms of the uh, the Japan team but I just struggled to say his name my mouth not really built for saying that name but a very good player will be trying to make a big impact in this game and then the replacement backs we have Sai Saito, Lee, and Fifita, and that's a that's a good replacement set of backs to come on in this game. I don't think this is a, a bad Japan team at all. I think these lads are going to come compete, and uh, I really look forward to seeing this could be one of the games of the weekend if Japan really turn up and give it their all. So what do we think in terms of a score prediction then, guys? Well... I still feel like I'm going to lean towards England. I think this game will be more important for where England are right now. They've had a few losses on the bounce. Eddie Jones is under a lot of pressure to start performing now. This is a World Cup game. This is a World Cup group qualifying game. I feel Eddie Jones knows how big this is. I can imagine you won't be seeing the most exciting England rugby in this first half, at least anyway. There's going to be lots of three-point penalties if they can get them. There could even be drop goals. They'll just want that scoreboard to increase. They'll want to secure the win over everything here. Um, and then in that second half, if they were getting to pull away, they're finding out what, what's going wrong in the Japan defense. You might begin to see the, the wingers open up. But I really feel like this is a game Eddie Jones will just want the win however they get it. And if they can do, lay down a bit of a point marker, something for them to work towards towards that World Cup as well. So I'm going to say an England win. Now, New Zealand only beat them by seven. Uh, but I feel like there was a couple of mistakes that happened in that game that allowed Japan into it. So I'm going to say England by 10, I think is going to be my prediction for this one. But of course, guys, drop down in the comments your thoughts on this game. Make sure you're putting the predictions up on the Super Brew if you haven't already. And if you enjoyed this style of video and you want to stay in tune with all the rugby news as it goes on, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. I hope you all enjoyed this one today, guys. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.